Ghana, Ghana joins other African countries in a march against the use of GMOs. Botifos bounces back to life. And Tanzania's president sacks home affairs minister after turning up in parliament drunk. Hello, good evening. Welcome to News Hour on GBC 24 and GTV. My name is Shelley Allen. I'm Zioko Kakuche. Welcome to the news. Now to our first story. Some years back, people living with disabilities were referred to as deaf, dumb, crippled or lame. In recent years, however, a more politically correct term, person with disability, is the accepted way of reference. In the Upper East region, however, the lack of appropriate vocabulary in the local languages to reference persons with disabilities is causing a drawback to the advances in the fight for equality and recognition for such persons. Abdul High Women reports for GBC 24. ...negatively, perhaps due to ignorance and some social cultural beliefs as well as economic factors. The challenges facing people with disabilities, therefore, are varied and could be in the form of violation of human rights, poverty, stigmatization, discrimination, and exclusion. Disability is closely associated with poverty and is also a barrier to education, employment, access to public services, and social protection. In most cases, the challenges facing persons with disability has been addressed through charitable approaches and passing of laws to recognize the rights of persons living with disabilities. Sometimes, however, such laws are not fully implemented, thus negating the efforts to improve the lives of such persons. Just a little over 10 years ago, many communities here in the Upper East region used to discriminate against children born with disabilities. Vulnerable children were at risk of discrimination. All that is changing now. Even though the positive perceptions appear not to have been translated into attitudinal change, this could reduce stigmatization and discrimination against people with physical disabilities. This is Clement Sampana. He has been living with disability since he was five years old. The most uh, sad thing here is uh, rejection and then insult. Yeah, like people can see you walking with the torches. They can just you know, mention certain ways that are not sure, but they'll tell you are a disabled person. Today, he works in a bank at Talency. He says, even though perceptions about people living with disabilities are changing, the lack of appropriate deduction in the local languages to refer to persons living with disabilities is slowing down the effort to gain recognition. In my uh, locality here, they say that the word is valid, which is uh, offensive when we hear that word. Africans have been able to give support to disabled people, they have been able to provide uh, jobs for disabled people and now they can move around, they can be able to earn a living for themselves and the society, the mindset of the society have changed towards uh, how they feel about disabled persons. In some Ghanaian societies, it is not uncommon for the causes of disability to be attributed to curses and witchcraft. As a result, families with persons with disabilities usually confine disabled persons indoors due to fear of stigmatization. Children with disability in particular may be denied their rights and privileges such as access to education, medical care and the right to socialize. Raymond Ayine has 10 years of experience as a development worker in rural Upper East region. He says the work of civil society organizations have helped to reduce stigmatizations of persons with disabilities. The media has highlighted some of these issues. And so in public spaces, people are beginning to discuss uh, some of these human rights abuses. Uh, a lot has also changed as a result of the work of 
some of the civil society organizations in the, in the Upper East region, notably Africans, World Vision, Action Aid, and the whole lot of NGOs that are working in Upper East. Perhaps to further help in reducing stigmatization, the Persons with Disability Act 715-2006 should be fully implemented and enforced to compel government, society, parents and guardians to provide all the needed infrastructure and resources to promote their social well-being and functioning. Abdulhai Mumin, GBC 24, Upper East Region. Sunday in May 22 marks International Day for Biological Diversity. Ahead of the event, the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Mr. Mahama Ayayuga, has called on all Ghanaians to desist from acts that will destroy the environment, including bushfires, illegal mining and logging. The United Nations instituted International Day for Biological Diversity to increase the awareness on biodiversity issues. Biodiversity focuses on proper management of water bodies, plants, animals and sanitation, science, technology and innovation, among others. As part of efforts to commemorate the day in the country on Sunday, the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation called on the general public to desist from activities that cause harm to the environment. The expansion of sectors that both depend on and affect biodiversity, notably housing, agriculture, forestry, fisheries and aquaculture have the potential to pose a significant challenge to halting biodiversity loss. The chairman of the National Biodiversity Committee, Professor Apao Obtinyabwa, called for concerted efforts to protect the environment. It is dangerous to wait until the end has come before you realize that you have lost something. And this is one of the reasons why we ought to be thinking that everything that exists that has life has a role to play in human life. The ministry also launched three other important events concerning the environment. These are World Environment Day, which falls on 5th June 2016. The second is the World Day to Combat Drought and Desertification on 17 June 2016. And finally, the Africa Day for Scientific Renaissance on 30th June. Work will soon begin on a market project and an Islamic community English school at Asin Fusu in the central region. This forms part of development projects being implemented by the Assembly. Asin previously had two constituencies, but now there are three, which are Asin North, Central and South. To ensure that the communities in Asin North get their fair share of development, the Member of Parliament, Mr. Samuel Ambre, and the Asin Fusu MCE, Dr. Kofi Blankson, have cut the sword for the construction of a modern market to replace the old one. The Asin Bruku market is one of the major business hubs that serves most communities in the central region. The new market, which is expected to be completed within four months, will cost more than 150,000 Ghana cities. Mr. Ambre urged the contractor to engage the youth in the area in the construction to create employment for them. At Asim Fusu, an Islamic school project is to be constructed for the community as part of the development projects in the area. Uh, we are also in, uh, talk, talking with the chiefs and people to support the uh, contractor to uh, as it, as it were, give him the necessary support. The municipal chief executive, Dr. Kofi Blankson, said the development projects are in response to the needs of the people in the communities within the municipality. He said the projects are being funded by the Assembly and the District Development Facility, DDF, at the cost of over 185,000 Ghana cities. A former dean at the Department of Languages of the University of Ghana, Reverend Professor Gilbert Ansre, has advised politicians against the use of hate speech during their campaigns in the lead-up to the general elections. He says such negative utterances create unnecessary tension and conflict, which can lead to a political instability. Professor Reverend Gilbert Ansre gave the advice 
during the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Ghana Meridian Presbytery, Third Synod at OEB in Accra. The Evangelical Presbyterian Church of Ghana, formerly known as EP Church, since its foundation in 1847, has helped in shaping the human resource of the country. The Meridian Third Synod is a newly created session in the church aimed at building the lives of its members and also improving the financial status of the ministry. This year's synod, under the theme, Go Make Disciples, is to review executive council reports, evaluation of stewards, groups and congregations of the 12 districts under its jurisdiction. It is also to consider new ways of creating jobs for the unemployed members in the church. The Synod Presbytery of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church Ghana, Meridian Presbytery, Reverend Dr. Major B.D.K. Agbeko, called on members to work together to create opportunities to improve the lot of the members, both spiritually and socially. The districts and committees will therefore have to adjust their traditional way of doing things to conform to the presbytery's agenda, to do new, progressive, and relevant things that will move the church and the presbytery forward to the glory of God. A former dean of languages at the University of Ghana, Reverend Professor Gilbert Ansre, advised politicians and religious leaders to avoid making statements that will undermine the peace of the country. General elections are frequently characterized by hate speeches as well as political tensions and upheavals during the electioneering campaign activities. We urge the church as a key civil society hold stakeholder in the governance of this country to rise to their religious responsibility and exercise her influence in the maintenance of peace and unity and reconciliation and, of course, love. As the saying goes now, before, during, and what? After the elections. The chief of Dodua, Nene Ukuklubo Ajiman, called on the clergy to help resolve chieftaincy matters because it is slowing down the wheels of national development. A former president of the South Ghana Conference of the SDA Church, Pastor Anthony Kesi, has urged Ghanaians to put the interest of the country above their partisan affiliation in order not to disturb the peace of the nation. Pastor Kesi was delivering a sermon at the 70th anniversary of the Asin Edubiasi SDA Church in the Central Region. The Asin Edubiasi SDA Church was established in 1946 by the late Joshua Akumenin Mensa. It is the oldest SDA church in the Asin area. The church started with six members and worshipped in Mr. Mensa's house until a church building was put up. Reaching the sermon at the 70th anniversary, the former president of the South Ghana Conference of the SDA Church, Pastor Anthony Kessi, said the church has achieved a lot in 70 years and a lot of people have contributed to the church's achievements over the years. It therefore behoves on others to continue to assist the church to realize the dream of its founding fathers. Searching on the elections, he urged all Ghanaians to endeavor to maintain the peace the country is currently enjoying. Pastor Kersey said it is the civic responsibility of all Ghanaians to vote to elect leaders but must guard against acts that will plunge the country into chaos. Even though we are living in a peaceful environment, something can cause war to happen. That's why we are still hammering on the point that peace should continue. The president of the Mid-South Ghana Conference of the SDA Church, Pastor Solomon Kufi Asante, said the church is built on a firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. People who unite and worship God signify that indeed they belong to Christ. A plaque was unveiled in honor of the late Joshua Okumeni Mensah, who established the Edubiasi SDA Church.
The program was attended by traditional rulers, politicians and people from all walks of life. Sixteen African cities in seven countries, namely Ghana, Burkina Faso, Kenya, Mauritius, Namibia, South Africa and Zambia, have taken part in this year's match against Monsanto, an American agricultural company that is promoting the cultivation of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, across the world. Food Sovereignty Ghana, a group spearheading the fight against GMOs, says this month's protest march is more relevant given that Parliament has resumed sitting with a plant breeders bill. The debate on whether Ghana needs to subscribe to the use of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, is still a slippery area. Across the world, views differ on whether GMOs should be accepted or not. Many citizens of countries that do not like GMO production have strongly condemned the idea through protest marches. This year's international march against Monsanto falls on the 21st of May. The movement was founded in 2013 in response to the failure of California Proposition 37. That proposition was taken to a vote to decide whether GMO products should be labeled so buyers could tell the difference between GMOs and non-GMO products. The voting failed, making it difficult for buyers to know if they are buying GMOs or not. GMO advocates themselves support mandatory labeling laws for foods made from GMOs. The international march against Monsanto is observed in countries that believe in an anti-GMO cause. In Ghana, Food Sovereignty Ghana is spearheading the fight against GMOs. The group supports the call for labeling but is totally against the introduction or cultivation of GMOs in Ghana. What is the wisdom in having to wear protective gear to spray a food and later you eat it with your mouth. So we're trying to raise awareness so that our policymakers will realize that Ghana needs um, to have a wider stakeholder consultation around this whole issue of biotechnology in agriculture. There's so much ignorance in our society today in Ghana about GMO. And yet, those who are educated and who follow this GMO debate know that there is a bill in parliament called the Plant Breeders Bill. In its current form, it's suicidal, for the farmers of Ghana and for Ghanaians as a whole. Tomorrow, Sunday, 22nd May, is World Biodiversity Day, a day set aside to increase understanding and awareness about biodiversity issues. Food Sovereignty Ghana is of the view that GMO is ecologically dangerous and would harm the plant and animal species that are connected to one another for the common survival of all living things. As part of activities lined up to mark the 53rd African Union Day in Ghana, the staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the diplomatic community in Ghana have embarked on a health walk in Accra. This year's celebration puts emphasis on women's rights. The work was also to keep fit and strengthen the relations between Ghana and the international community. The health walk started around 8 a.m. from the premises of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It involved staff of the ministry and diplomats from South Africa, South Sudan, Egypt, Algeria, Namibia, Cuba and Zimbabwe. They moved through the 37 military hospital to the frontage of the Flagstaff House and made a turn towards Cantonment Post Office on the Switchback Road. The movement continued from the Elwa traffic light and back to the Foreign Affairs Ministry near Airport Junction. The theme for this year's event is African Year of Human Rights with particular focus on women's rights. The Director of African Regional Integration Bureau at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Mr. Eric Osubuaten, spoke about government's decision to facilitate free movement of Africans within the region. Effective July 2016, Ghana will be granting visa free for African citizens that arrive on our shores. But you come here, you are given 30 days to stay in the country, to do whatever you need to do, and then go away. It is really in line with the reputation Ghana has in the African unity. 
the deputy head of missions for Namibia, Mr. Gabriel Shanika, was happy taking part in the health work. Actually, this is a moment of that can bring nation together. We are representing our respective country, but all in all, it is the common goals. It's also beneficial for us as individuals, as a health worker. The celebration will be climbed with a flag raising ceremony and a dinner at the banquet hall State House on Wednesday. Water levels in the Booty Falls is reported to have risen substantially after a month of drought. This was after a recent downpour increased the volume of the water in the Pompon River from where the fall takes its source. Patronage of the fall has bounced back. Bad farming practices is believed to be the cause of drying up of waterfalls every year. Buti is the corrupted version of the Akan expression, a buoniti which means the top of the rock. This is how Buti Falls derived its name. A Krobo hunter called Tetengwa discovered the fall over 50 years ago and reported it to a Catholic priest who also sold the idea to the whites to start making the place known to the public. Buti Falls, which takes its source from a river called Pompom in a nearby forest, flows over ignorant rocks at Buti Langmasi, where it forms the twin falls believed traditionally to be a male and a female. A few months ago, the Buti Falls was reported dead because the canopy of foliage covering the river that serves as its source caught fire in a very sunny weather and dried up, thereby exposing the water to the scorching heat. The waterfalls bounced back following the recent rains. This attracted more tourists to the site during their leisure hours. Some researchers also went there for research. When GBC24 visited the place recently, about 500 tourists including the clergy, students, religious organizations and individual families had come to the fall for pleasure. It was an opportunity for photographers to do business. The manager of the Buti Falls, Ms. Miriam Uwusu Chum, spoke about plans to make the falls more attractive to both domestic and foreign tourists. We will be creating a relaxation plan. And it's going to be the first in West Africa. We have more news coming up. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying on. It's time for the business news. Fruits, they say, always keep the doctor away in most situations. And now the abundance of watermelon on the market in Accra has pushed prices down to as low as one city. But while consumers are happy, the traders say the high cost of transportation is eaten deep into their pockets. Watermelon is a vine-like tropical flowering plant originally from southern Africa. It requires a lot of sunshine and high temperature of over 25 degrees Celsius for optimum growth and thrives best in dry weather with a well-drained fertile soil of fairly acidic nature. The fruit has a smooth hard rind, usually green with dark green stripes or yellow spots and a juicy sweet interior flesh, usually deep red to pink but sometimes orange, yellow or white with many seeds. In Ghana, watermelon is often grown along the coastal areas such as Adam, the forest zone such as in Karanza, Tichiman and Agugu and along riverbeds in the northern savannah areas. This fruit has a lot of uses with the roughages eaten by pigs as well. A visit to the Abubloshi market in Accra shows that watermelon is in season and there is a glout. Watermelons are in season. That is why it is an excess supply. Traders in the watermelon business, however, say though watermelon is in season, they are not breaking even. They blamed the situation on the move by some of their suppliers from Ada who have now decided to come to Accra to sell their produce directly. The producers now sell their products in the market. This has affected our profit margins. 
Some traders also added that they now make a profit of less than 500 Ghana cities as against a profit of up to 1,000 Ghana cities before the cloud. Formerly, we could make sales between 1,000 to 1,500 cities a day. But now, we make less than 500 cities a day. Sales around this time is not encouraging. A consumer, Mr. Jacob Dawuni, is however happy about the dropping prices. Jacob said now he can get watermelon for less than 5 CDs as against 10 CDs a couple of months ago. Currently, this is the season for it, so the price is a little bit lower for us. I wanted to see if I can get 2 CDs for another. It is also observed that some traders end up losing out because most of the watermelon goes bad because its shell life is just two weeks. To the traders, the way out of the perennial waste is to process these fruits which has the potential to create jobs for the youth. The National Pension Regulatory Authority has organized an education program on the Tier 3 pension scheme for the informal sector at Kofodia in the Eastern Region with a call on the sector to join the National Pension Scheme for a Secured Future. Eight. A new pension law was passed by Parliament paving the way for the implementation of the three-tier pension scheme. It also replaced the previous Social Security Cup 30 and related schemes. As a result, the National Pension Regulatory Authority, NPRA, was set up to regulate and monitor the operations of the scheme and ensure effective administration of all pensions in the country. The new three-tier scheme consists of two mandatory and a voluntary scheme for all employees in both private and public sectors. The second tier is an occupational pension scheme mandatory for all formal sector employees but privately managed and designed primarily to give contributors high lump sum benefits than previously available under the SNIT pension scheme. The third tier is a voluntary provident fund and personal pension scheme supported by tax incentives. The Corporate Affairs Manager of the National Pension Regulatory Authority, NPRA, Mr. Emmanuel Ewuku Dagwadu, said the purpose of the program is to sensitize those in the informal sector on the importance of the National Pension Scheme. He said it serves as an investment which would enable them to sustain their livelihoods. The National Pensions Regulatory Authority is set up to regulate and supervise all the public trustees to make sure that Nobody ran out with for money. The system is such a way that you don't need to pay the money straight to the corporate trustee. You pay the money to the bank. And then the corporate trustee will ask the bank to invest the money. And the money in the bank is also separated from the operational capital of the bank. So even if the bank is liquidated or is bankrupt, they cannot use pension money. There were similar educational messages from the Penn Trust and the Gold Coast Trust Services. The Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, says maintaining the policy rate at 26% will make it difficult for companies and industries, especially local manufacturers, to retool and expand their operations. In an exclusive interview with GBC24, the president of the AGR, Mr. James Asaria J, said the association was expecting a reduction in the policy from the new governor of the central bank. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana recently announced that the central bank was maintaining the policy rate at 26%. The central bank cited inflation the falling oil prices on the international market and moderation in price movements over the period under review as the reasons for the decision. The policy rate is the interest charged by the central bank for lending money to the commercial banks. The current prime rate is 26%, but the commercial banks charge their customers 32% interest on average, thus putting Ghana in the league of countries with the highest interest rates in the world. Argentina tops the list with 35%, percent 
Malawi 27% and Ghana 26%. Switzerland is the country with the lowest interest rate in the world charging negative 0.75%. According to the president of the AGI, Mr. James Asareje, a high policy rate regime translates into a high cost of doing business and local manufacturers who borrow from commercial banks suffer. As a country, we don't do something to check this high rocketing cost of credit. Then it will be difficult for us to be able to industrialize. It will be difficult for us uh, as a country to have indigenous businesses growing in the country. AGI was very much, uh, I mean, not satisfied, you know, when the policy rate was maintained at 26%. Players in the manufacturing sector say, apart from the high cost of lending, the difficulty in assessing loans in Ghana is making the operations uncompetitive. The best will be that the interest rates in general should, should come down, uh, at least to the level of our neighboring countries, because they are the people we do most business with. So if we are able to enjoy the same rates as uh, our neighbors do, uh, then we can be more competitive in our own country and then also uh, in the export market. The AGI wants government to take a second look at its monetary and fiscal policies in a way to reduce the policy rate. It is uh, a step in the right direction. I mean, when it comes to trade and industry ministry making all efforts, you know, to see the cost of credit come down. And when we are talking about interest rate, you know, it's more of monetary policy and uh, it, uh, we expect the central bank, Bank of Ghana, to do a lot more, you know, to ensure that there should be some level of capping of interest rate. We should also look at the fiscal policies of government, you know, to uh, be able to bring down interest rate. Already, there is high loan repayment default rate and a non-performing loans rate of over 16% due to high interest rates. It's for the business segments. My journey is next. My journey, a reporter's diary of events from across the country, showing every Saturday night at 7:30 p.m. only on GBC 24. Road traffic accidents have so far this year claimed more than 508 lives across the country. Data from the National Road Safety Commission shows a sharp increase compared to figures for first quarter of 2016, during which 395 persons died from road accidents. On my journey tonight, Abdul Hai Mumen will be on the road with you to Bogatanga, the Upper East Regional Capital, where in the first quarter of this year, 16 people have lost their lives through road accidents. Statistics from the MTTD of the Upper East Region indicate that the region recorded 55 deaths last year, as of which 33 occurred in Bogatanga. So far this year, more than 16 people have already lost their lives to road accidents. Road transport provides benefits both to the nations and individuals by facilitating the movement of goods and people. It enables increased access to jobs, economic markets, education, recreation and healthcare, which in turn have direct and indirect positive impacts on the health of populations. However, the increase in road transport has also placed a considerable burden on people's lives, especially in the form of road traffic deaths and injuries. This is Bogatanga. Here, the locals say the number of fatalities and injuries on the road appears to be growing. Road accidents here are caused by three main factors, human, road defects and the vehicle defects. Here lies a man, his life snapped away by speeding tanker just on the outskirts of Bogatanga. His relatives are devastated. Lord, oh Lord, go take care of him. Go take care of him. 
this is the Bogatanga Navrongo Highway and this portion of the road in the Bogatanga Township itself is well noted for many accidents. This truck behind me just ran over three persons riding on two motorcycles and killing one of them instantly in the process. Two others are critically injured and have been rushed to the Bogatanga General Hospital for medical attention. For fear of being lynched by an angry mob, the driver absconds. Eyewitnesses give an account of what they witnessed. All the noise, but uh, to my own understanding, I think the other motor is coming from the other opposite side of the bus. And the one who is now late also uh, tried to overtake the car. So there we, 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 we heard the cars. When we turned, the man was already down. The three motors over, they were all down. And then the car and the private cars. When they give you her lies, you can't get it, uh, the road clear and go. You understand? So you make it confused. So instead of we should work, we should limit the motor riding in the night, speeding the motor in the night, and the, the cars to, to minimize the hard lies for us. Many have blamed the lack of adequate speed ramps on the highway that runs through the Bogatanga Township for the numerous accidents. Others blame it on reckless driving. This taxi driver is driving without some rear view mirror. Why don't you have a mirror? Because of the motor riders. Uh -huh. When you park at the traffic lights, yeah. you come there, you think they will do it sharp, sharp, that thing like they want sharp. When they come back and they come back here, they will be, be inside the middle. I think that they want fast, so that they can't hit the mirror. This not, and they will not stop at my view. One motor, I just take my mirror and go. Yeah, and so, chase so, him, so I didn't see him. So now you're driving without mirror, how do you look at your back? I'm looking here, I'm watching the inside of the mirror. This one. Many of the victims of road accidents in this part of the country are motorbike riders. Some of them ride without the protective gear or helmet. Road safety officials say to win the battle against deaths on the road, influential people must stop interfering with their work. Law enforcement agency is not able, is disabled, let me say that, because of that interference. We've done so much education information and we try our best to stop it. Anytime we are ready and mobilized to do an operation to stop it, we see people calling in, either a political leader, a chief, an imam, what have you. So I just want to appeal to the opinion leaders, the MPs, all MPs from the north, opinion leaders, the chiefs, to wake up. Otherwise, one day, we will wake up and there will be nobody on the road. And the road is no respecter of any person. One of the major ways of improving safety on the roads in Bogatanga, especially for commercial drivers and motorcycle riders, is to establish driving and riding training institutes for young commercial drivers. This will afford the commercial drivers and riders the opportunity to be regularly updated on the highway code and be abreast of existing and emerging traffic laws and regulations. Abdulhai Mumin, GBC 24, Bogatanga. The international news is next. And in international news, Tanzania's president has sacked his home affairs minister after he turned up to parliament and answered questions while under the influence of alcohol. President John Magufuli, who took office in November, has promised to tackle corruption and inefficiency in government. He has sacked several senior officials for graft and cut spending he deemed wasteful, such as scrapping official Christmas cards. Charles Kitwanga is the first minister to be fired since the cabinet's appointment. 
analyst said his second came as a surprise as he was widely viewed as being close to Magufuli. The president has vowed to impose discipline on the civil service and public institutions. Families of victims of downed Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 are suing Russia and its president Vladimir Putin in the European Court of Human Rights. The jet was shot down by a Russian made missile over eastern Ukraine in 2014, killing all 298 on board. The West and Ukraine say Russian backed rebels were responsible, but Russia accuses Ukrainian forces. The family's claim is based on the violation of the passenger's right to life. The claim is for $7.2 million for each victim, and the lawsuit names both the Russian state and its president as respondents. The Egyptian military has released images of items found during the search in the Mediterranean Sea for missing Egypt Air Flight MS-804. They include life vests, parts of seats and objects clearly marked Egypt Air. The plane was en route from Paris to Cairo with 66 people on board when it vanished from radar early on Thursday. Investigators have confirmed smoke was detected in various parts of the cabin three minutes before it disappeared, but say the cause is still not known. French Foreign Minister Jean-Marc Aroud said all theories are being examined and none is favoured. The group of seven major economies has pledged aggressive action in the fight against financing terrorism and extremism following talks involving Japan. Finance leaders of the G7 issued an action plan calling for increased exchanges of information on financial intelligence, reducing the level of cross-border transactions subject to disclosure and collaborate on targeted sanctions for financial networks of outlawed groups. The announcement came after two days of meeting ahead of a G7 summit to be held in central Japan's region next week. In the U.S., President Barack Obama has criticized the U.S. Congress for failing to back its request for a $1.9 billion fund to combat the spreading Zika virus. He warned that the country could face bigger problems in the future. His comments come as the latest figures showed that there were nearly 300 pregnant women in the U.S. who had tested positive for Zika. The virus is thought to cause serious birth defects. It is spread through mosquitoes and sexual contact. The World Health Organization has declared the Zika virus a global public health emergency. There have been around 1,300 confirmed cases in Brazil, with thousands more under investigation. Symptoms of Zika virus include mild fever, headache, joint pain and rashes. That's it for International News Sports is next. Now to some sports news. The second edition of a mentoring program aimed at impacting the philosophy of the Olympics in students has been held at the Laboni Senior High School, dubbed Making It Happen. The event was to help students blend sports with culture and education. Making It Happen seminar is a mentoring program aimed at impacting the spirit of Olympism into students across the country. 
The event, which is the second in the series, took place at the Laboni Senior High School in Aqua. It featured some of the national athletes who have so far qualified to this year's Rio Olympic Games. Ghana's first para cyclist, Alem Mumuni, the first Ghanaian power lifter, Charles Nate, and the first national lady weight lifter at the Olympics, Alberta and Ponsa, all shared the experience with the students. This was to inspire the students to know the benefits sports and academics have for them in the near future. I could have been somewhere that arise in any of the, the Western countries to get all the benefits, despite the fact that the country does not see or does not value what I do. But the 5% of Ghana's population, persons with disabilities, we want to erase that perception that we are future parasites, cares or beggars in our society. No. We just need the nominal chances to rise to the pinnacle of life as international ethical leader. The deputy head of missions of the Brazilian embassy, Mr. Rubem Amaro, touched on preparations for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. It is the creation of an Olympic mentality that we are looking for. In other words, the idea of turning sports activities into a long-term systematic routine. One of the best arenas for Jitsu is not a sports one, but the classroom. To our program was put together by Liquid Sports Ghana, a Ghanaian based website. The first edition took place at Accra Academy Senior High School. The first Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Mr. Melissa Na, says apart from administrative cost, the second highest cost of operation for the Bank of Ghana is the reprinting of the Ghana CD notes. Mr. Na says reprinting can be avoided. If the currencies are handled properly, he revealed this in Accra during a sensitization health walk dubbed Keep the City Clean. Keep the City Clean was the message for the 2016 health and sensitization work embarked upon by the Senior Staff Association and Medical Department of the Bank of Ghana. They converged on the Ayi Mensa Tobut area on the Accra Ebri Road and climbed the hills to the Pediasi Lodge area. The aim of the work was to, among others, socialize and burn out accumulated calories. The entire staff of the Bank of Ghana, including the governor and his two deputies, took part in the work. At the end, fiscal instructors took the participants through an aerobic session. <laughs> First and second deputy governors of the Bank of Ghana spoke to the news team. One thing that the public um, is not aware is that we spend so much money in printing our currency. And if you look at the way the notes are handled, it's so appalling, especially when you go to the markets, you see the way the market women handle the currency. It's not the best because oftentimes when the currency is mutilated we have to withdraw it from circulation and spend millions of, of, of pounds or dollars to reprint and that is why we are taking um, a, pre, a proactive measure to educate the public about the best way of handling the currency so that we can make some savings in the cost of printing or replacing the currency. Health-wise, uh, it's great. I mean, if you talk to anybody, all the staff here who have taken part, they'll tell you that the feeling is nice as anybody would have after exercise. And apart from that, the, the, the fellowship is great. To see everybody moving together, talking about ourselves, I think this is great and, and it's something that we, we intend to continue. Organizers of the work said, Throughout the year, they will continue to educate Ghanaians on the need to handle the national currency with much care. Celtic have appointed former Liverpool manager Brendan Rogers as their new manager. Rogers has signed a 12-month ruling contract to replace Ronnie Della, who departed the Scottish champions at the end of the season. In Liverpool, Swansea City, Reading and Watford Bulls, Brendan Rodgers assigned to join the Scottish champions at the beginning of the season. 
The 43-year-old Blue Jays left Anfield in October after being in charge for more than three years. He will come up against Rangers manager Mark Warburton next season with the two men having worked together on the coaching staff at Watford. Rangers moved into management with Watford and subsequently had a spell in charge of Reading before leaving Swansea City to promotion to the Premier League. The switch to Liverpool followed and Rogers came close to the title in the 2013-2014 season, finishing two points behind Manchester City. However, he left Anfield without winning a trophy. Entertainment is next. Thank you for staying on to news on GBC 24 and GTV. Before we go, a look again at the stories that made headlines for this evening. Ghana have taken part in this year's match against Monsanto, an American agricultural company that is promoting the cultivation of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, across the world. Many citizens of countries that do not like GMO production have strongly condemned the idea through protest marches. The water level in the Boti Falls has risen substantially due to the recent downpour in the Pompon River where it takes its source as such patronage of the falls has increased significantly. And Tanzania's president, John Magafuli, has sacked his home affairs minister after he turned up to parliament and answered questions while under the influence of alcohol. President Magafuli has vowed to impose discipline on the civil service and public institutions. And that's it for News R for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back. At 10.30 with this week, good evening. Good evening.